What up, nerds? I'm Bryson. You can call me BAMD, and this is CTF and Cigars by BAM CTF, where I light up a cigar and talk about CTF and security related things. So this week I've got uh, Taylor returning. So, Taylor, say hi. Hey. Uh, Taylor, aka Tay Pop, he was on, I think it was last week, right? Yep. Yeah, last week uh, he did some crack me's. Today he's going to do what he usually does at work, which is sit back and watch me do all the work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to look at doing uh, creating some game cheats. So we're going to hack some games and look at how you can uh, create some cheats using Cheat Engine, which makes it super easy, almost too easy. But before we get to that, I'm going to light up a cigar, and I've got a very nice special cigar this week. Uh, this is a Padron. Uh, it's a 1926 series 40th anniversary edition. Uh, this is a torpedo. Uh, so the torpedo, you can see it's got the tapered off end here. Um, this, the torpedoes usually have a much stronger flavor. So when they, they taper off the end, so you've got a nice wide cigar, they can pack a lot of flavor, a lot of different, uh, leaves into that. But then when the, the, uh, you taper off the end, all of that flavor gets kind of condensed and it gives you a more intense, bold flavor. Uh, and this, so this, this is a, this is a nice cigar. This is something I'll smoke maybe once or twice a year, uh, because you're going to spend anywhere from 20 to $30 per stick for this one. Um, most of the stuff I get is usually, you know, half that or less. So th this is, this is a little bit nicer. Uh, this was the cigar of the year, uh, 2004 by C cigar aficionado. Um, you can see it's, it's got a really beautiful wrapper, really nice color to it uh it's nice and smooth almost silky um i this this is probably one of really one of my favorite cigars like i said it's it's a special edition kind of once in a uh six months kind of thing uh, but it's got a uh very earthy and kind of cocoa smell to it let me let me cut this now you got to be careful when you're cutting a uh torpedo <clears throat> so you don't want to cut um, too close to the tip or else you, you actually end up cutting off too much of that airflow and it becomes a really hard draw and you don't, you don't really get much smoke out of it. But if you cut it too far, uh, the other way, then, you know, it can start unraveling, uh, or you actually just don't get the benefit of having a torpedo if you end up cutting off all of that tapered tip. So, so what I like to do usually around four millimeters is, is the recommendation, um, but, but what you want to look for, and if you can see really closely there, you can see where it's wrapped and there's like a line, um, where it's, where it's wrapped. I try to cut right before that line. So I've still got that a bit of the cap on it. Uh, but I've still got a nice taper at the end as well. So let me cut that off. All right. We got a nice smooth cut there. And let's light this. So yeah, this is this is a uh, again the Padron 1926 edition or 1926 series 40th year uh, 40th anniversary edition. So we'll light this up now. This this uh, cigar it starts off very strong on the earthiness and a bit of cocoa flavor, um, a bit of sort of peppery with, with, with the retrohale. So that's when you, uh, you need a little extra flavor out of the cigar when you exhale through your nose. Uh, it's not something you do every breath, but, you know, occasionally you'll do that. You get a little extra flavor. Uh, and, and then you get that, that cocoa and earthiness when you start it off. So, like, the first third of the cigar. And then as you go, that those flavors kind of build up. Um, so you get more cocoa and a bit of coffee uh, as you go. And a bit more spice. <laughs> Yeah, definitely get that black pepper on the retro hail. And then once you get to the end, that, that cocoa becomes more richer and creamier, almost like a like a milk chocolate with a bit of sweet cream. And that coffee gets more intense to like an espresso. Uh, so it, it's it's really nice. This this is this is really a wonderful cigar. It's probably one of the, the best smokes I've ever had. Um and I don't but I don't have it very often. So this I recommend this to anybody who wants one. Taylor, I'm I'm not gonna send you one of these. Sorry. Yeah. I... <laughs> uh, and yeah, to, to to pair with that today, I'm uh, I'm having I'm gonna have some scotch. So I've got this bottle 
right at the end of it. It's uh, Ardbeg Ugadal. So Ardbeg uh, in the Islay region of Scotland. So it's an island off of Scotland. Um, they make really peaty, smoky scotch, and that's that's what they're known for. The Ugadal is actually named for a lock on the Islay Island. Actually, there's a map on the back of the of the bottle. You can uh, you can see that. I don't know how well the webcam picks that up. But there's a map of the Islay Island where Ardbeg's at, and then Ugadal is where they get the water that they use for the uh, for the the scotch. That is a good cigar. So yeah, the uh, the Ardbeg is um, it, it's got the usual peatiness and smokiness you expect from from Ardbeg, uh, but the Ugadal it's actually aged in a ex sherry cask, so it's got a lot of sweetness that comes with it, kind of a raisiny. Um, it's got a very bold smell. There's a you know very smoky. Um, some, some, somewhat leathery, but you also have that like coffee smell, a bit of uh, like cayenne pepper. Uh, and then when you actually taste it, it's, this is beautiful. So it just, it coats your mouth and, um, hits you with, with different, different layers and, and, uh, just keeps coming at you in waves. So it's very deep, very luscious. Uh, it's got some sweetness to it, like a bit of salted caramel. There's some brininess, definitely a lot of smoke. Um, yeah, that's good. And, th and then it finishes off with even heavier smoke, but also like some salty sweetness to it. Uh, it's really nice with the, uh, with the Padron. So that's, uh, that's what I'm enjoying this morning. Taylor, what are you enjoying? uh the same as last time just a little upgraded with the with the wood tip this time because <laughs> i'm still too lazy to go to a, a humidor and get a get a cigar all right or i'll just wait on you to ship me one sounds good okay so this week um we are going to take a look at the sheet engine so i've been playing around this with this for just like the past week or two uh, cheat engine is is a free uh free game you are free not a, it's not a game it, it's a free uh application that you can get you can just download it. i think it's cheatengine.com uh it is something that's still in active development they just released a new version of it this week uh so so they are working on uh, new versions and it's a great tool for helping you find memory addresses uh, in an application and actually rewriting some of the assembly live as you go. Uh, and along with that, it, you know, lets you create cheats for games. So I thought what we'd do to start off with, it comes here in the help menu. There's, there's a tutorial that kind of walks you through how it all works. So if, if you download it, you can go through the tutorial. It's actually really easy, uh, but there's also this tutorial game. So let's pull this up. I, I went through this last night. Music kind of loud. Yeah, let me let me mute that. All right, we don't need the sound for this. All right, so we'll look at this. So there's three levels in this game. Um, we'll take a look at the first level here. So I just oh, my aim's off. Got to destroy that target to get to the first level. Okay, so here's the first level. Every five shots, you have to reload, after which the target will heal. So we need to try to destroy the target. So I shoot five times. You can see over here is my ammo. So I have ammo till reload. One, two. Each time I'm hitting it, I've almost killed it. But when I reload that last time, the, the enemy's health resets. So what I need to do is, is I want to find in address where my ammo is stored and just uh you know let's let's just give us infinite ammo why not so what I, uh, i've got cheat engine open i've got the uh, the tutorial game open i need to attach to the process so what I, uh, i've got cheat engine open i've got the, uh, the tutorial game open i need to attach to the process hey taylor i think we're getting some echo back on your side yep sorry about that okay. All right, so I'm attached. Now, um, 
I've got several things I want to go through today, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, what, what, what I would normally do here is I would search in memory for this number five, uh, but I've, I've already done this, so I know that doesn't work. This actually, instead of counting, uh, instead of this actually displaying your ammo, it's uh, the actual counter we're looking for is counting how much ammo you've used. So instead of starting with five, we're going to start with zero. So what we do here, uh, this is kind of where Cheat Engine shines. This is the main thing you're doing is you're searching for values in memory. And I've been talking too much. Let my beautiful, wonderful cigar kind of go out on me. I'm, I'm ashamed to say I've done this publicly. Let my cigar go out. Um, we won't let that happen again. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to uh, search for, uh, so we got a scan type, and there's a no number of things we can search for here. Uh, we're just going to look for an exact value, and then we also have the data type. So for just a numeric value, usually you're just looking for four bytes. Um, so as we get into some other stuff, well, we might look at some other data types, but this is where we're going to start. So we'll start our first scan. So it's going to scan in, in the memory of this uh, application and look for any four byte values that are equal to zero. So now if I fire, I've used one bit of ammo. So I'm going to do a new scan and I'll enter a new value. And this is going to scan. It's no longer scanning all the memory. Cause you can see we found like 3 million locations. It's going to scan through these memory addresses and see where now the value is equal to one. So we've gone down from 3 billion to 60. So we've, we've jumped down quite a bit. So I'm just going to shoot again. So we're going to now look for two. And now it looks like we have our address in memory. Uh, what I did is I double click to this. It adds it to my little table where I can keep track of things. And let me, let me go ahead and turn away from it. And we'll see as I fire again, you can see that value goes up. So now I've used three, four, five and then when i hit five it resets <clears throat> so one thing i can do here just using the cheat engine itself if i check this box it actually freezes that value so it's still at zero uh it tries to set it to one but then it gets reset back to zero because of cheat engine uh, but that's that's not what really what want to do. For one thing, these address locations they're going to change every time I load the game. So if 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 I just do it this way and set the value, then every time I play, I'm going to have to find that address again. So what I want to do is I want to I want to actually figure out what is writing to this address in memory. So this this address this is where the variable for how much ammo you shot is kept. So what I'll do, I'll right click on this address here, and there's actually a function for find out what writes to this address. So we're going to attach a debugger. It's going to watch that address. And then as I fire, we can see we, it's found what function is writing to that. And in this case, uh, and this is pretty much what we're doing where the value is going up. So we can see that we're adding, uh, to so we've got a D word and a pointer to this uh, memory address, which is RBX plus six C. So RBX being the register where the value is, or well, it's, it's going to be the uh, a register plus six C. So that's a it's a relative uh, address space, and then we're adding the value one. So it's exactly what we'd expect it to do because we're increasing this value by one every time we take a shot. So now I know where that address is. We can see it in disassembler. And what I can do from here, I can actually create some injection code. So in the tools, there's this auto assemble. And this is, this is pretty cool because it kind of does all the work for you. Now I can use a template. And uh, all I've really played with so far is this AOB injection. So AOB is an array of bytes. Uh, what it's doing is it's looking at the address space where I'm starting and it's looking for some unique an array of bytes at that space. That way, every time it loads the game, it can then search again for that array of bytes and find this correct location in memory. Now here's the assembly code. So it's just take, usually takes the, uh, the line you're at in the next three lines or, or until, until you get to a, uh, 
a call or a return like the rest of the function. And I can edit this. And what this will do is it'll take this original code that was, uh, uh, it'll look for this array of bytes, find that original code, and inject my code instead. And all I want it to do is not decrease my, um, or not use up my ammo. So I'm just going to comment this out. Now that I've done that, I'm going to assign this to my cheat table. Uh, close these windows. So I've got this script here I made. I can rename it. And let's see. Now I'm firing like normal. It's doing the same thing. If I check this, we can see as I fire, my ammo does not change. And this technique works on other games. Uh, when when I when I finish through this tutorial, um, we're gonna pull up a uh, FPS. That's that's why I've got Taylor on here so he can shoot at me. Uh, but we're gonna pull up an FPS and, and show you how it, the exact same techniques will work. All right, now this one, I've got two enemies, and every time I fire, they both fire at me, uh, but they have a lot more health than I do and they do more damage than I do. So as I fire, I quickly die while you can see their health bar barely changed. So what I want to do is find my health and increase or make my health infinite. So we're going to start over. We're going to do the exact same thing. We'll start off with a known value, which is my current health, which is 100. So this, again, we were only, this time we're only at 180 values, so it should be a little quicker to find. I fire, they both shoot at me, my health goes down to 96. So now I'm going to do a new scan, or a, uh, sorry, not a new scan, but a continuation. This will be the next scan of the same, the same uh, process. And we're going from 180 now to 1. So we found that really quick. And we're, we're basically just going to do the same thing we did before. Let me, let me clean this table up a little bit or move that address. We don't need it anymore. All right, so this is our health. Just add a label so we can keep track of that. And we can test this if I fire again. You can see as my health goes down, this value goes down as well. So we're basically going to do the mostly the exact same thing here. Uh, this one does add a little bit more complexity to it. So I can go uh, find out what writes to this address. There we go. So this time it's another function. This time we're subtracting. Um, EDX. So whatever the value of EDX is, we're subtracting it from RAX 60. And what I can do to test this um, without actually, you know, writing the code yet, there is an option here to replace it with code that does nothing. And what that does is it just changes this code. So we've got this subtraction, this is sub RAX 60 EDX. It's now going to replace it with NOPS. So that's a that's a null operation. So it's doing nothing. Now I fire and my health doesn't go down, but my enemy's health is also not going down. So that's not uh, not everything that we need. So now I can restore with the original code. So it puts the original code back in there. Make sure that works. All right, it does, and you can see my enemy's health is starting to go down again. So this this function isn't just controlling the character's health; it's controlling all of the uh, the the characters and the the NPCs as well. So let's let's figure out what uh, what address this instruction accesses. So we've got an instruction set; it's going to access different addresses. So we can we can uh, again pull up another option here that's going to find that out and let me let me not fire at anybody. So when I fire, there we go. So we can see this is an address space that that um, instruction accesses. But when I turn at enemy number one, we can see there's another address that's being accessed. If I turn at enemy two. There's another address that's being accessed. So now I've got an address space for variables that are related to each character. So this top one is me. This is 
uh, enemy one, this is enemy two. So what I want to do is look around these addresses in memory and, and look for something that differentiates between the player and the enemies. And I believe what we want to do, let's see, let's browse this memory region. Nope, that's not it. I want to, there we go. I want to dissect the data. That's what it is. All right, so this is going to pull up a chart, and I've, it's doing it for each address. So this first column, uh, well, well this, this column would be the first address I had. This is the second, and this is the third. And if we look at this, so it highlights anything that's different between the three columns. And I want something that's unique for this first column. So this is me, the player, versus the other two columns, which are the enemies. Uh, so we can see, you know, there's some values here. They, uh, you know, these don't really mean anything to me, but what I'm probably looking for, okay, here we can see their health. So there's my health, there's enemy one's health, enemy two's health. We can also see like our starting health. But then look here, we've got a zero, a one, and a one. So I'm, I'm making some assumptions here, and we'll, we'll test it. Uh, but I, I can tell you, because I've done this before, that that's, this is what it is. So zero represents the player, and a one represents the enemy. So now let's go back. And okay, so and I have a space for this. So our health was at... Let's see, that's RAX plus 60. And we can see here, so we're, we're looking, this is, this is uh, again, um, relative. So we're actually looking at RAX and plus 60 here is the health, which is what we would expect it to be. This is our actual character's health I pointed out a minute ago. So this RAX plus 70, this is going to be the location in memory where the... Uh, is it a character or is it an enemy as specified? So now I'm going to go ahead and do what I did before. I'm going to auto assemble and we'll do an AOB injection. All right, now you do need to know a bit of assembly. So this is going to take a little bit more work than the last thing that we did. Uh, I'm going to create a new function. So I'm going to add a label call it kill and then I'm just going to copy all of this code down here now I'm going to add basically add an if statement but we're talking about assembly so it's not an if I'm going to do a compare and I want to check to see if RAX plus 70 is 1 and if it is, so I'm going to do a jump. So JE is jump if equals. So this is how you do essentially if statements in assembly. You, you compare some values, and then if it's equal or not equal, then you're going to uh, jump to another location. So if it's equal to one, meaning an enemy, then I'm going to jump to kill. <laughs> then I'll comment out this line so if it's not equal to one <clears throat> excuse me which would be me the player which is equal to zero then it won't do the jump and it'll continue through the rest of the function but without actually giving me any damage now just to make this go a little bit quicker i'm going to actually change this so this is subtracting edx which i'm going to assume is where it's storing the uh the damage value for the ammo that i'm using uh so instead of moving or subtracting edx from uh rax plus 60 which is the location of the health i'm actually just going to change that to a move function and i'm actually going to just move zero so what this will do if the uh the object taking damage is an enemy it'll jump to kill and it'll just assign their health to zero so let's assign this to the current cheat table. Clean up some of our windows here. We'll uh, call this God Mode. All 
And by the way, you can also assign hotkeys and things to this. So in in game, you can turn cheats on and off. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But now let's see. So, all right, I'm not taking damage. I one shot, and bam, he's dead. Now the other guy is pissed off about it. He's going to launch a mega bomb. Here it comes. He's dead, but his mega bomb still does nothing to me. I am invincible. So yeah, that uh, those same techniques, like I said, they work on different um, different games as well, not just this tutorial. And we'll look at that in a minute. But one more fun one to play. So this is the third game. Uh, this this game. Um, essentially, the goal is to go through the door at the at the other side. Uh, if you run into an enemy, you die. Uh, and the door isn't currently open. What you do is you notice when we jump on each platform, it turns to green. We've got to jump on each platform to activate it. And then that will unlock the door and we can go through. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll spare you guys watching me fail this. Um, it, it, it can be a little hard to get these jumps right. Uh, but what happens when you unlock all of these, the enemies completely surround the door. So it's actually impossible to win without cheating. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to figure out um, the the code that defines collision and, and make it so that I don't take damage when I collide with any, an enemy. So let's see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> I've only, I've only walked through this, this bit once before, so we'll, uh, it's the beauty of live demos. We'll see if it works. So we're going to start with an unknown initial value. What I want to do is I want to find the code or, or the bit in memory where my location is defined. So you, uh, this is just a 2D game, so I've got an X and a Y coordinate. I don't know what they are. I don't know where they are. I don't even know my health. You know, if I knew my health, I could do something like I did before if I had a health meter, but I don't. Uh, so we're going to start with a scan. It's in searching for an unknown initial value because we just don't know what our current location is. And we're going to make some assumptions here. Uh, we're going to assume, since it's uh, X, Y coordinates, that if I continue moving to the right, the location for my X coordinate is going to increase. So now I'm going to search for an increased value. So it's going to take, originally I was scanning for an unknown value. It just stored a bunch of, oh, sorry, I screwed this up. Hold on. Uh, this is where I need to change the type of data I'm looking for. So coordinates uh, are usually a float instead of uh, four bytes or like an integer or a double. That's usually a float. So uh, hopefully if you're watching this, you know at least enough about programming to know the difference. Uh, floating, uh, a floating point, um, variable is is going to have decimal points essentially uh an integer is going to be you know a a uh something without a decimal um but yeah so the floats what we're looking for so we'll do that again unknown initial value first scan move to the right just a bit look for an increased value now, you notice there some of these are changing, and it highlights them for us, but I'm standing still. So none of these ones that are changing are what I'm looking for. So what I can do to clear this up, so I'm down to 2,000, I can search for an unchanged value, and that removes, and I might do that a few times. So some of these might be like the locations of the, of the, uh, the enemies or some other things. It might be like where my mouse is on the screen, because you notice as I move my mouse around, some of that changes. So I'm going to reduce it a bit by removing some of these unchanged values. I'll move to the right a bit more. Look for an increased value again. And there's just a bit of, you know, let's go back and look for a decreased value. Keep doing this. Let's, uh, let's jump up on a platform so I don't take any damage. Look at an increased value again. Let's uh, go forward some more, another increased value. So this is kind of back and forth. All right, but now I have a, a value. So let's go back and forth. We can see it going down or going up as I move left to right. So let's let's hope this is our X coordinate. And what I can do, I can actually assign a value to this. So let's see what, I, what happens if I set this to one. Oh, look, I teleported. 
so yeah this this is the value uh let's let's set it to zero yeah move me to the middle of the screen okay so this is our x value let's now let's find our y value um so let me remember what to look for here i think we want to browse this memory region nope let's disassemble this memory region did i did i just click on the same thing Well, maybe that'll work. Let me change how this looks. All right, let's see if I move around. Okay, so we can see right here, this value changes as I move left to right. And then if I jump, there we go, we can see this value is changing. So we've got our X and now this is gonna be our Y coordinate. So usually, you know, X and Y are going to be stored together. And so if you find where X is stored and just look around it and move around, you'll see where the Y coordinate is. All right, let's add this to our <clears throat> list. So this is Y. So we've got our X and Y. Let's, uh, let's test this out. Let's make our Y minus one. Yep, that brought us to the top of the screen. Okay, now let's see. Um, let's see, what do we want to do now? Let's, uh, let's see what writes to this address. Or maybe we want to see what access is this address. All right, this is where I probably should have practiced a bit more. Try to remember what uh, what happens here. Oh, uh, you know what? No, no, let's let's go back and look at this address in memory. So I believe if we, when we die, some other things change. So let's let's uh, let's make this. A little bit bigger so let's look at some uh nope let's all right like i said i did this once and all right so there's a number of things that change when i get hit so one of the things i see here this value when I take or when I get hit changes from a zero to a one. So that's interesting. So it goes to one and then it goes back to zero. So let's uh let's take a look at that. And I think there's something similar. You looking for the collision value? Uh no, there's another place where it goes from a one to a zero where I get I get hit. So I'm trying to find where that's at. Well, let's, let's see if this is the one that I need. So let me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna freeze this. And it looks like it broke the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Um, well, crap. Uh, we're gonna have to start over because it seems to be frozen up. So that is not the space I'm looking for, probably. Um, I tell you what, we are. Uh, like I said, I've I've got stuff to do this afternoon. I need to cut off here in about twenty minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to the next tutorial. Um because it might take me a few minutes to remember exactly how this all works again. <laughs> Sorry about that, but let's, let's do something a little more interesting. So Taylor, are you able to, to get onto assault cube? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me start joining now. Just trying to adjust my options here so I can turn off this, uh, music. All right.
Okay, so Assault Cube is a uh, it's an open source FPS game. It's it's a little bit older, but still has an active community. I've set up a server that we're going to be using. Uh, it's not currently open to the world. You need a password. I'm not going to share the password. Um, all right, but Taylor should be able to connect. Working on it. Start this I up. I learn how to spell cube first. <laughs> While he's doing that, we'll look at a couple things that we can do. So I'm on the server. Uh, first thing I want, I want to increase or get infinite ammo because why would I want to run out of ammo, right? So let's uh, let's attach to assault cube. Um, no, I don't need to keep the current list. So we're gonna start over. So I've got my ammo counter here, so we can see I've got six. Uh, got a shotgun, so I've got six shots left. So we're gonna search in memory. We're gonna do an exact value. Start with a new scan. Exact val exact value. Four bytes. Start our first scan. So we've got 26,000 results. All right. I'll shoot again. Now I've got five. So I can search for five. It's gone down considerably. I will shoot again. We're down to four. Oops. I forgot to change my value, but hey, I can undo my scan. You ever screw up? You don't have to start over. Just don't be too quick about clicking on things. All right, so we've got two values here. When I shoot, you can see they're both changing. Uh, one is probably a pointer to the other. Uh, one is likely um, like the value of my ammo, and the other one may be like the value for the HUD. I'm going to add these both. And then what I can do, I'm going to, I can trace up to three at a time. So I'm going to find out what writes to this address. All right, so I got that going, and then I'm going to find out what writes to this address. All right, so now when I fire, all right, we can see that both of these are just, uh, so DEC is decrement, so they just go down by one. Uh, let's let's see which, which one might be the right one. It, what we can do, we can freeze it. Okay, so I fro froze the bottom one, and it's still changing my ammo value, so it's not that one. If I freeze this top one, there we go. It, it tried to reset it to three. I don't know if you saw that, but it goes back to four. All right, so this was uh, 7cc. All right, so it's this address. So this is the address that we want. This is where the uh, ammo is actually decremented every time that we fire. So we'll do exactly what we did on that first game we looked at. So we can see, here's the function. We can just auto-assemble. Gonna use an array of byte injection for our template. And I'm just gonna comment that up. Let's sign that to our table. I'm gonna name it. Call that infinite ammo. All right, so now I fire. I've got down to three, but let me set this, turn that on. And yes, now I have a reusable cheat script so I can save this uh, cheat table and reuse it and now I have infinite ammo on my shotgun and this also works for my pistol so this is uh, going to be the uh, the ammo for whatever your current weapon is it looks like now there's a different variable for grenades uh, let me see if I can find some grenades on this map somewhere. Yeah, these, this is a dark map. It's not coming in very clearly as I'm sitting here outside. 
Um, are you in yet, Tyler or Taylor? Yep. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I found a grenade. Let's uh, let me let me get infinite grenades real quick before I start uh, killing uh, Tyler here. So we're gonna look. I currently have zero grenades, so we'll look for a zero. We've got a lot of results. The uh, the server yet? What was that? Are you on the server yet? I joined the server, but I think I'm the only one in the room. I'm on a lighter map. Kind of looks like dust from Counter Strike. Uh, I thought I joined the server. Let me double check. That might. I noticed okay. some of the addresses changed when I uh, was playing remote. Huh? I might. I may not. Have, I must not have joined. Let me try this again. Cool. Or maybe I didn't. I don't know. Nope, you're right. I I, I screwed up. Let's see if I can find you. All right, my uh, shotgun ammo is still infinite. Sweet. Cool. So the cheat still works. Yeah, the cheat still works. Um, I see your phone. All right, here we go. There's our grenades. So let me let me just go ahead and start over on my scan since I got on the server. So I'm gonna do a new scan. Look for, I have zero grenades. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did before. Like, really, this this bit's nothing new. Ah, oh, there's there's Tyler. Taylor. <laughs> Sorry, we just started working with somebody named Tyler, and I keep getting Tyler and Taylor mixed up. Don't, don't shoot me yet. Oh, man, you took my grenade. <laughs> You're messing up my demo. All right, I'm going to sit back. All right, it'll, okay, it, it regenerates pretty quickly. So there's there's a new... Grenade. All right, so I got a grenade. Now I'm going to scan for one. So I've gone from zero grenades to one grenade. All right, this is taking some time. Pick up another one. Yeah, but it's still scanning. Oh. There we go. It found millions of values. I mean, searching for zero comes up with a lot of stuff. And things that switch from zero to one still can be quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to grab another one. So now we're going to search for two. I have two grenades. And this should narrow it down pretty quickly. There we go. So now let me switch to grenades. I throw one. We can see when I threw a grenade, this top value went from two to one. So this is going to be our grenades. Oh, we got one minute left. Ah. <laughs> uh, all right. Timers. Once again, we'll find out what writes to this address. Uh, I just threw a grenade, blew myself up. Fantastic. Looks like Taylor's going to win. Uh, but again, it's the same function, same kind of thing we saw as before. It's just decreasing the value of EAX. So I can do the same kind of script here. Auto assemble. We're going to do an AOB injection. And I'll comment out the actual decreasing of the value. Let's assign this to my cheat table. All right. Now, this doesn't give me grenades, so I'm not going to start off with any. Um, but you'd actually need to do some more scripting for that. Let's see if I can give myself a grenade. Oh, I did. Look at that. Since I knew where the grenades were, I was able to give myself a grenade. And let's, what happened? Did, did you pick a new map? No, I just, uh... all right. Well, it's still, it's still running. Got... Let's see. Are you, are you in the same map as I am now? Uh, hold on. I got to see what you, Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I've got infinite grenades. I've still got infinite ammo. All right, now the only way I'm going to beat Taylor is if he can't do damage to me. So let's... Uh, oh, there he is. He just did some damage to me. All right, so <laughs> my health right now is 81. And this this is going to be, again, this is just like the uh, the other game that we looked at in the demo. So we're going to look for the exact value. Find 81. Uh, let's see. Where'd you go, Taylor? Go ahead and shoot me again. All right. So now let's find my new health, which is 42. 
There it is. It's the answer. Uh, let's find out what writes to this address. All right. Shoot me again. All right. So now we've got an address. And let's look at this in the assembler. Now, this one, we're not actually decrementing a value. What we're doing is we're moving a value. So we're moving EAX to EDX plus F8. Um, okay, this, this looks a little bit different than when I was playing doing it before with, a, uh, with the bots. So I, I was trying this out just with bots without an actual second player, and I wasn't sure what effect that would have. I think you took an arrow to the knee. Oh, did I? <laughs> let's let's see what happens if I just replace this with code that does nothing. This may break things. All right, Taylor, can you find me? Let's uh let's see where are you? Some kind of underground cave now. Yeah, I'm standing out here to kind of an open area. All right. I'm there, I just saw you run by. There you are. All right, shoot me. Look at that. He shot me and nothing happened. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you. Oh wait, nope. I took damage. <laughs> uh, it just didn't change my health. Okay, well that that's not ideal. Uh, it's probably just uh, uh, the UI. Yeah, I just changed the UI. All right, so let's let's do this again. Maybe we should have practiced this. All right, so there's there's a couple of other places here. So I've got a few other addresses now where my um, health was changed. Let's see what these do. Uh, that doesn't look like it. Let's see. Nope. All right, let's try this again. Let's do a new scan. Look for my health. So this is definitely like a trial or trial and error kind of thing. It it takes some time. It takes a lot of debugging, and I'm trying to cover a lot of content here in a short amount of time. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. All right, I can remove some of these because I can see they're changing. All right, now let's uh, let's find each other again, and you can shoot me. Open the space here. Um. Oh, it's like I'm underwater. Oh, is this is is this actually CTF? Looks like you got the flag. Yeah, I've been running around with the flag. I wonder what it looks like. No idea. I'm just kind of hanging out in this open space here. In the All center right. of the map. Alright, let me see if I can find you. There we go. Alright, so go ahead and uh, shoot me once. Okay, so my health is now 81. So I want to look for an exact value of 81. Okay. This is the same space. Nope. Looks like it's a different. No, it is. Okay. It is the same address. Find out what writes to this. All right. Shoot me once. Shoot me again. Okay, looks like that's, yeah, it looks like this is the place. So we've got a few different, um, few different instructions here. Things are moving around. Let's see what happens when I shoot Tyler, Taylor. So your health, I assume, is 100 right now, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. So let me scan for your health. 
All right, I'm going to shoot you. All right, what's your health now? What was it? 50. 50? Mm -hmm. Nice. Shotgun. Oh, I didn't actually do my first scan correctly. Okay. Let me see if I can shoot you. There we go. This won't do as much damage. All right, what is it now? 38. 38. Okay, so there's his health. Okay, so there's actually, we've got different locations for those. Let's find out what writes to your health address. All right, so I'm going to shoot you again. And let's see if that's the same place. So we've got, that's my health. And this is your health. Looks like, yeah, it looks like it's the same address that's cor that's uh, um, correcting for both of those. So if we actually get this working, then it's going to make us both invincible. So this, this is one of the interesting things about Assault Cube. So it was designed to be a low bandwidth FPS scan. So there's actually a lot of the stuff is done client side. Uh, and there's a lot. There's not as much checking done on the server side as what you would if you were pub playing some other more modern games. Uh, but let's let's see. Let's show this. Go back to the assembler here. Oh, game over. Game over. All right. So what are we doing here? We're doing some testing. Oh, I find now. All right, so we're moving ESP plus 28 to ECX. <laughs> we're comparing to 1B. So this is where we're probably comparing which, possibly which character is taking the damage. And it looks like ECX and EAX probably um, are related to the the taking of damage. So let's see. Replace both of these with knobs. See what happens. All right, shoot me again. I'm going to stab you. All right, stab me. All right, I took no damage. Now I'm going to stab you. Oh, oh. oh. You, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Let me see if I can keep stabbing you if it'll kill you. All right, yeah. Like last time, because last time it seemed to not work. Oh. Hold on. I just saw you. Uh... All right, I'm going the opposite way now. Yeah, I saw you like run down some stairs. I'm at the top of the stairs now. There you are. All right, ready? Ah! ah. All right. Well, my demo's failing. <laughs> yeah, we may need to. Uh, I I bet that the uh, the real values on the server, and that's what it trusts. Yeah, there there may be something there. Um, all right. Well. Updating the local values and not the server values. Yeah, it could be. So maybe we need to modify the. Uh, uh... Hmm. Let me let me restore this code and trying something else here. Okay, so I've disconnected from the server. I'm going to grab some grenades and I'm going to grenade myself. All right. looks like it's the same address in memory for my health. Um, so let's again, find what writes to this. Let's uh, give myself a grenade here. And 
They committed. Yeah, we gotta get closer. All right. So the, yeah, this has been a little bit buggy when I played around with it. Um, when I start modifying things manually on local mode, it 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 like stops calculating the uh, the health. So yeah, this this isn't working the way I was hoping it would. Let's let's try just doing a. Uh, just gonna launch a local game with some bots. I don't want them to be good bots because I don't want them to kill me right away. Uh, let's see. How many bots did I add? Four? There should be some around here somewhere. Yeah, we definitely should have... Uh, practice this and tested it beforehand. There we go. All right. So I took some damage. I've got, this is what I was looking for and it wasn't showing this up on the server. So it probably is done server side. Uh, I, I, I probably should have tested that, but locally this works. So we'll, we'll, we'll I'll look into it some more this week. I'm going to continue this next week. So we'll see what happens, but you can actually see here where it's subtracting the value. And that's what I was hoping to find. Now, let's, again, find out what address writes this instruction because I'm going to, yeah, so I've taken some damage. I'm going to take some damage. Shoot me, bot. Shoot me. Okay, this bot's dumb. He's not shooting me. Um, I'm going to shoot him. So I've got an address space for that bot. He's dead. Let me see if I can find one that will actually shoot at me. There we go. Somebody attack me. All right. So now I've got an address from, for me and for another enemy as well. Uh, let's go back and look at them. So I think I'm the middle one. So we'll do, this is the same thing we did for that second game in the tutorial. Let's dissect it. All right, and we're looking for a unique, so I'm the one in the middle. I want to find probably a zero that represents me as a character as opposed to one of the other characters. I think I'm the one in the middle. Let's see, how much health do I have right now? Okay, I'm off the map. Yeah, now I'm back, and my health is at 100. Okay, this looks promising. So I've got a 0 for me, and then there's an 880 for the other two. So let's, let's see if this is it. So this is going to be... All right, let's find our instruction... We're looking at EBX plus four is my health. So let's see if EBX plus 78. Let's see if that's me as the character. So we'll, we'll try the same thing we did before. Yeah, definitely should have uh, tested this more. Uh, last night we had a zoom happy hour and that's where i was testing this so maybe it's a little fuzzier than i remember it being all right so i'm just going to do the same thing i did for the uh that previous game uh we'll do a compare plus and what address was that I think it was the 78. So EBX plus 78. 
going to compare that to zero and the jump if not equal to kill then comment that out so I don't take damage sign to the current up I have got a typo somewhere I think my wasn't using the same brackets on both sides. There we go. All right, let's test this and see if this works. If not, then I will figure this out and come back next week. So this guy isn't going to attack me. And he's apparently not taking damage. So... All right, well... I apologize for fucking up my demo this week. <laughs> you you at least saw some of the basics in the tutorial. The same principles apply, but for a game like this, it's a little it is a little more complex. Um, I swear I had it working last night, and uh, I didn't have that much to drink last night, so I'm sure it was working. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll 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 work on this. We'll figure it out. We'll try it again next week, and then I want to get into. Uh, um, Pony Island. So this is P-W-N-I-E, not P-O-N-Y. There's another game on Steam called Pony Island that's P-O-N-Y, which is a completely different game. Uh, so Pony Island. It's kind of got some hacky themes to it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Pony Island has, it, it was a, it was actually a game written for a CTF back in uh, 2015. I think it was released at ShmooCon. Um, and it was a it's an it's an MMORPG. There are uh, the servers aren't up anymore, but you can run it locally, and there are um, you can actually get the server and run that as well. Uh, so I, I did have some luck with that, but I've got to run today, uh, so I don't have time to show you any of that. But uh, these same principles work, and Pony Island was designed to be hacked, so it's a little little simpler. I had ha I've had had some trouble with Assault Cube, where some of my results have been inconsistent, as you just saw today and uh it's the game's crashed on me a few times when i was playing with it this week so uh but i will figure out this assault cube we'll come back to you we'll uh we'll show you how you can actually get it to, to get it to work um just a disclaimer I, you know i don't recommend actually running cheats on a public game server um you'll probably find yourself banned <laughs> so it's usually not a good idea, but but it, this is a good... Hopefully you can at least see kind of the power things you can do with Cheat Engine. Um, this is actually a, a really nice tool just for disassembling programs and finding values in memory. It's got a, a really easy-to-use interface for that kind of thing. Um, I'm interested in seeing how this might work on some crack me's and that kind of stuff, so we might try that in the future. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I've got time for today. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll come back next week, continue this, and I uh, think that will do it for this week. Just a couple of things. Um, if, if you've got any suggestions on content you'd like to, to see me go over uh, on a future episode, uh, hit me up on Twitter. That's at BAMCTF. That's B-A-M-C-T-F. Uh, if you just want to know where you can see all my videos and all my content, uh, bamctf.com, that's B-A-M-C-T-F.com, has links to my uh, Twitch channel, and then I'm archiving everything on YouTube, so you can see stuff on YouTube as well. The, the links are there. And then any anything where I've got some files, like we've done some crack me's, we've done some CTF challenges in the past that were like offline type challenges. I've got some of that source code available through my GitHub, which is also linked on bamctf.com. So check that stuff out. Uh, please make some suggestions, uh, add some comments, let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, we're probably going to spend a few weeks on some of this, uh, this cheat engine stuff because I think it's a lot of fun and there's, it's, pretty in-depth there's a lot you can do with it so we'll probably be doing this for the next few weeks uh and then we'll we'll see what we do from there so thanks again for watching uh thank you taylor for joining me just so you can shoot at me a few times uh <laughs> it was fun and uh i'll see you guys next week and don't forget if you're in a ctf and you ever get stuck to um try harder don't panic and don't forget to rtfm
So I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>